Romans chapter 15 and verse 14 says, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you are also full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. If this is something that you and I are supposed to do, and if we're not doing it, why aren't we doing it? Rome was a place just like America, full of lecherous lies, demonic forces invading and twisting the minds of emperors and senators and philosophers and preachers and teachers and scribes. The culture was given over to hedonism. But here, Paul is confident that the brethren, those who were truly saved by the preaching of the gospel, that they were able to be filled to the fullest with goodness and knowledge and able to admonish one another. I, I, I get this picture in my mind that we just are so far from what we're supposed to do. We have allowed the standard for what body life and Christianity, what it really is, we've let it drop so low. And I don't know about your church. I just know about what I see. And when I talk to people, I can glean from them what they know of Christ because me and Jesus spend a lot of time together. And when someone is filled up with Jesus Christ, you can just tell. If you know Christ and I know Christ, we have sweet fellowship. But he says in verse 15 of chapter 15 in Romans, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points, reminding you because of the grace given to me by God. We need preaching right now to get us stirred up in the areas where we're weak. There's no other way to wake the dead or the spiritually erring other than through the preaching of the Word of God. It is the Word of God preach that God saves and establishes the truth. This is throughout the New Testament. And it's right here in Romans chapter 15. We'll continue to read as it says in verse 16 that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. Remember, this mystery called the gospel of Jesus Christ, how one man saves the world, all the nations, fixes all the problems with time and, re and reconciles man to God, all men, from Adam till the last man that gets saved. Every one of us will be perfectly reconciled to God through that one man, Jesus Christ. He is our governor. He is our king. He is our mediator. He is the one that is the bridge that connects us to heaven and to perfection. And he says that being a minister of this gospel of God, this connection to God, this reconciliation treaty that God has given us to proclaim to you, that offering that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. For a Jew to believe that a Gentile could be accepted by God was a mental challenge. It didn't make sense that you didn't have to go through all the rites and rituals, the civil law, the ceremonial law, because it was detailed. It was all-encompassing. It affected your whole life, what you ate, how you conducted your affairs in the synagogue, in your city life, how you handled problems, how you dealt with people who did things wrong. It was sudden and it was real and it was powerful. But in the Gentile world, it seemed just lawlessness abounded. It says that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, sanctifies the Gentiles. He brings us nigh. The Spirit of God makes me acceptable to the Father just as the most orthodox yet messianic Jew. I am sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
That's what Paul says. He says, therefore, I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus in the things which pertain to God. There are things that pertain to man that don't make sense. But then there are things that pertain to God that do make sense for Paul because he sees it all completed. He sees what's coming. He knows what exists in heaven versus what is here on earth. And his preaching had a purpose, was to sanctify the people of God. So preaching not only saves, but preaching sanctifies the body of Christ. He goes, for I will dare not speak to any of you those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word, in deed, to make the Gentiles obedient. See, he didn't make the Gentiles Jews, but he brought them to Jesus Christ. But at the same time, he preached the law to them. And he reckoned in, in Romans chapter 2, all men short or dead to the law, unable to keep the law. Because those Jews who accused those Gentiles that they were not keeping the law broke the law themselves. We all are condemned under the mighty, holy, awesomely true law of God. It just reckons us as insufficient. It's like your bank statement, you know, when you bounce a check or you can't pay for insufficient funds. None of us are sufficient to satisfy the transaction of being a law keeper. We can think you're a nice person. I can think I'm a nice person. But is that how I, I pillow my head at night to say, you know, I'm a nice person? No, I pillow my head at night knowing by faith that I've been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, that I have Jesus. He is my most precious commodity. And I got that through the gospel, through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I didn't understand the gospel until these latter years of my life. But I heard the gospel, and it wasn't until God was pleased through the continual preaching of the gospel, he preached it to me, others have preached it to me, but it is in the understanding of the gospel, in my heart, in here, in my chest, in my being, that I understood what it meant to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit, what it means to be a true believer in Jesus Christ. We have to get to that understanding in the church. We have to be bigger minded, broader minded than just our culture. If you live in the South, it's how they do it in the South. If you live in the North, this is how they do it in the North. We've got to get bigger than that. That's why we need to incorporate the Messianic Jew into our worship. Let them blow the shofar. Let them tell us about the Passover Seder. Let them teach us about the festivals, the spiritual meaning of these things. Not in a legalistic way, but see, it's in our coming together that we learn the gospel of God. We understand the mystery, the purpose behind it all, from things pertaining to God in the heavenly places. We are with those 24 elders. And if you believe with me that those 24 hour elders represent two major portions of time, the 12 leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel and those 12 apostles that headed up this time, the time of the Gentiles, the time when the word of God would spread to all of the known world and still is spreading and still is going out. As earlier in this, it says, for this reason, I confess you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. He's quoting, I believe, from Psalms, Psalm 8, 18. And, uh, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with your people, with his people. Rejoice with the Jewish person. Rejoice with the Israelite. Rejoice with the sons of David. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples. We are to come under the authority of Jesus, who was a Jew, who was the leader of 12 Jewish men, 12 original disciples, apostles, one of whom became a devil, who the devil inspired to betray him, and who was replaced truly by Paul or Saul. There was another Matthias, but the Lord was going to replace Judas with Paul. And it says here, Isaiah said, there shall be a root of